how it came to me to write it. Having been seconded at the Press and Information Office in 1977, I was called at the Director's Office to be told that I was to be assigned the Turkish desk. But I know very little about the Turkish Cypriots and almost nothing about Turkey. I retorted in panic. Lair was the one word reply of the director hammered on my head. Since that time I've been learning. In fact, I've been trying on the one hand <coughs> to be in touch with the constantly changing, multi-faced reality of the Cyprus in Broglie, and on the other, to gain a deeper insight into the origins and the escalation of the crisis by reading extensively on the when, the why, and the how of the intercommunal conflict, the involvement of Greece and Turkey, of Britain and the US, and of the UN peacekeeping and peacemaking mission. Groking with reality made me share entrenched views and revised opinions in the light of new data relating to both present and past reality. I can recall in this regard my first encounter with the Skeros tour in London in 1984 and how I felt while hearing about genuine concerns he shared with the tech Cypriots. I can also recall the strong feeling I had in 1991-92 that something was changing in Turkey that Rudozal was genuinely or very timidly seeking a solution in Cyprus, that we might help things move if we met the challenge. As I can also recall a comrade's angry volley at me, you've joined the ones willing to sell out. The Pietje Sumedus and Dodibus, the exact Greek Cypriot words. When I suggested in my party's central committee to accept the Gallic map and the set of ideas as a basis for negotiation. While continuously keeping an eye on the grand picture, I never lost sight of the fact that the main actors were and would always be the people of Cyprus, and that their perceptions of the problem and their envision, and their envision of the future of Cyprus were crucial factors in the search for a solution. And that unless a common vision of Greek and Turkish Cypriots was achieved, there was no chance for a viable compromise solution. If at the root of the problem lay the incompatible vision of the political future of Cyprus by Greek and Turkish Cypriots throughout the 20th century, a common vision became for the first time a tangible perspective during the Turk Cypriot uprising of 2000-2003 against the Turk Turks regime. The slogan this country sounds, which was spontaneously voiced during the mass rally of the Turk Cypriots in July 2000 and spread like wildfire capturing imaginations, took final shape in the common vision platform founded in, on 9 August 2002. It was a unique historical moment. Most importantly, it was not an isolated development. An unprecedented convergence of developments at local, regional and global level <coughs> had created a unique solution timing. These were first the review of U.S. foreign policy planning in relation to Turkey and the Middle East, initiated by Paul Brook in the mid-1990s, a planning that for the first time since 1964 favored a reunification solution on Cyprus. Second, the review of Greek foreign policy orientation by Simidis and Papandreou in the 1990s, which through the earthquake diplomacy and the Helsinki Accord of 99 opened the way for Greek Turkish rapture's man. Third, the abandonment by Kyridis of the active volcano and military option tactics and the alignment with Simidis' solution accession strategy from 99 onwards. Fourth, 
the deep rooted internal social change in Turkey that brought the architectural power in 2002, along with a substantive review of Turkey's policy on Cyprus with clear evidence of political will for a compromise solution. Fifth and final, the seismic developments that led to the uprising of the Turk Cypriot School for the first time since 74 saw the future of Cyprus in a reunited independent federal republic member of the European Union. It was within this unique historical juncture that the UN initiative developed and the annual plan took shape. And it was against the challenge and within the framework of this juncture that I faced the Anna Plan, which I took great pains to study in all its successive versions, against the background of previous UN plans as well as of Greek and Turkish positions. It was not just with a measure of justice as we Greek Cypriots perceived it not either with the absolute measures of the UN Charter stipulations. However, it was a physical and tangible compromise between UN Charter principles and the correlation of interest, power and influence in the region. Between the Greek Cypriot demand for return and the reinstatement of property and the facts created on the ground throughout the long history of the Cyprus problem through substantive return of land in displaced persons, through the return of all holy places to each community and all historical monuments to the central federal state, the Anna Plan allowed for the possibility of reconnecting of people with their historical and cultural habitats. <coughs> Moreover, through constitutional provisions meant to function within the European framework, and this is most important element. The Anna Plan created the preconditions for a common path of Greek and Turkish Cypriots along common Cypriot, Cypriot interests, allowing for a peaceful and creative interaction between ethnic and civic loyalties. And it was my conviction, based on rational analysis, that the dynamic of solution, the European framework, and the broader conjuncture itself were the strongest guarantees of the implementation and the functioning of the solution. And I had the feeling that rejection of the plan on our part would constitute a tragic collective blunder which would make solution even more difficult and more complicated than ever. And I felt an irresistible internal drive from the day after to write down the story and try to explain the no verdict of my community. No more as a person on the stage, but as a detached researcher, trying not to fit facts into theory, yet not without a compass, aiming not merely to establish historical facts, but to pierce through and bring to light the inner dynamics of history. Whether the end result of my work is history or not, it's up to the critical reader to judge. <laughs>